Hello, everyone. It's it, Brandy Madison from Spectrum Art. Yes, it is. And hello, everyone. Uh, today, welcome. yes, welcome to Spectrum Art. We are going to be sharing how we created our own flat back embellishments using silicone molds. Along the way, we are going to share with you what we've learned, some tough lessons, <laughs> uh, some really good pointers. Um, and also we're going to talk about pros and cons and expenses uh, in case you do decide that you want to give these a try. Um, and you can decide which of all the options you think it's the one that suits you the best. So let's talk about the, the cons. First of all, the cons are of course that first of all, you need many different materials to go ahead and make these and utilizing the molds is not um, inexpensive. I will say that it is an investment. These are um, the ones that we actually purchased from uh, Hobby Lobby. And this is the actual official, the orange ones are the Mod Podge brand. These are very, very good quality. So I will say that some are good quality, some are poor quality, right? Um, these you can definitely know that you're going to get your money's worth. You're going to get amazing details. Um, it's going to be nice and flat and even. We did also get some other ones uh, from Amazon and um, those are pretty good quality as well. Uh, I wouldn't say any less inexpensive or less expensive, but I will say that um, at least you get more of a variety, right? Because obviously they have a lot more different uh, makers out there. Now, I also went ahead and ordered some from online through overseas, you know, the Chinese stores and buyer beware, it's hit or miss. Some of them are quite nice like these. Some of them are very uh, poorly made. I mean, you can see that, you know, they're just fraying everywhere. Um, they're a little bit cheaper material. Um, some of them are not even uh, flat or even. We had a button one that we tried yesterday. Let me see if I can find it. Where one of the buttons, it was all, you know, it wasn't even, let's just put it that way. No matter what you poured into it, um, the mold on the bottom just wasn't uh, shaped right. So some of the detail is not as crisp. Some of them are not even. Some of them are just plain, right? Look, look at this, it's paper thin. And so depending on what material you use, you well, actually, you couldn't even use it. Some of the material you will be able to use um, with these, actually only one that I can think of, and I'll share with you that um, information as well. But for the most part, something like this would be, um, pretty much useless. So, but you do get a large variety. They have lots of great uh, molds out there, but again, buyer beware because you sometimes get what you pay for. Some of them are quite large, which is beautiful. I'll show you this one. Some of them are quite small. Uh, so again, it all depends on what you work on. Um, like this one right here, this pocket watch is adorable, but it's so very minute that unless you're working on something like altering a ticket or a very small embellishment you really are not going to be able to see that on anything just about so but anyway we got quite a few of them um just wanted to show you some different sizes and quality of materials the pros to making your very own is number one you have an unlimited supply right and you have them anytime you want so let's say that you're working on a project and you need some gears and um you know you need 50 more gears. You can just go ahead and whip them right out, right? So that is the good thing. You don't have to drive to the store or order them and wait. So that is one of the pros. Uh, the other thing is, of course, again, the details and the intricacy of, of some of these molds is just gorgeous. When you buy flatbacks at a store, sure, it is faster, it is cheaper, it's less messy uh, and all that. So for that, I will give you that. It might not be worth as far as the consumption of your time um, and the mess to make some of these. But you will not get these. To get this kind of like this key, to get that kind of, um, of a flat back embellishment, it's gonna cost you, it's not gonna be cheap. Um, some general ones like um, like these maybe, like the jewels, you could probably find those um, fairly inexpensive, although not at this size. Uh, but when you get into the ones that are really, really intricate, like flowers and birds nests and stuff like that, um, it, it is going to be pretty hard. Like this one is, you know, a little bird's nest with the little eggs and then a, a bird on a branch. I mean, these, the details are absolutely amazing. Um, so let's talk about 
now that we've looked at some of the molds, we've learned about some of the pros and cons, let's look at individually the, the ones that we did actually end up using um, the materials. I'm gonna share with you four today, okay? Uh, and then you can go ahead and decide. Again, if you wanna give this a go, make the investment and all that, um, and put the time into it. And more importantly, which material would you rather use? Sorry, had a camera hiccup, but um, let's go ahead and review the materials. So the first one that we went ahead and used, or that we tried out, was uh, an inexpensive method, which is just using your hot glue gun and glue sticks. A um, Couple of pros is the fact that it is very inexpensive, right? It is super quick, because as soon as it dries, you're ready to go. Um, you will need your hot glue gun, you will need some sticks, and you will need a um, either a, where is my spatula? I thought I had it right here. You'll need a uh, silicone spatula, because if you want to be able to get into those really n small crevices and get some great details, you're gonna have to push down. And even at that, it is not the easiest. Here, let me find a piece of paper, and I'll show you what I mean. Um, you will see that some of them have still have strings. Some of it is a little bit lumpy. Um, some of them are pretty good. I know the gears, see the gears, how there's like little holes and areas. See that, you can see it better on that side where it did not connect. It's very hard to get the details. That one's a little bit better. Um, and so again, you know, practice also is gonna make perfect, but here's a perfect example. If you look at this clock, and I think we did two, Yes, let me clear these off so I can show you those two in contrast. See this one? Much better. See that one? Not necessarily, so it's actually missing the top. And it's very hard to see when you're missing um, little spots because it's clear, right? Uh, but it does get better with practice. Um, is it my favorite method? No, it is a little bit of a, you know, it takes work, let's put it that way. But it is very inexpensive, no odor, um, fairly quick. The best thing, what I love the most out of this and why I might continue to try and figure out a way to go ahead and use it is because of the flexibility. Um, so say for example, you are working on, let's say a project like this and you want it to go ahead and put this on and wrap it around. Look at that, it just goes right on there. So I absolutely love that. So that might be one worth revisiting and, and playing with again. Then the next one that we went ahead and used was this. And this is a, an acrylic latex silicone um, tube. You will need the tube and you're going to need a spatula. I will tell you that it is a very slow process and it is very messy. Um, what you'll need to do is you'll need to push your caulk into the mold, grab your spatula, press down at an angle, and then swoosh it in press it in and clean off the, the remainder so that you get that flat back. Not my favorite method. It was kind of inexpensive because I want to say that the tube was like five bucks, three bucks, I can't remember, but it's fairly inexpensive. Um, and let me show you what they look like. This is what they look like. So you can get some great details if you work into it, but see even here are some areas that are missing. Um, here, you know, I'm gonna have to go in if I want to and clean out those in-between spots. Uh, so, and here, see, you still have some that I haven't peeled off. So, mm, I don't know. This one I'm kind of on the fence on. I, I probably would not do it again just because of the amount of mess that it actually creates. But I will, once again, tell you, very easy to paint. Actually, I think I missed some details there. Very easy to paint and also, what? Moldable, right? So it can go around a project um, or anything that you want to go around. I mean, look at that. How beautiful is that border around anything, right? Okay, so that was the Alex paste. So that was method number two. Method number three was we use air modeling uh, dry, excuse me, clay from Hobby Lobby. And not as difficult, not as messy, a little bit cleaner. Um, not my favorite and I'll tell you why. Yes, you can get um, some good impressions if you really press down into the mold, um, but there are areas, let me show you where like this key, where you know you still get those little edges and in some places it doesn't give you that crisp detail. But above all, the reason why I do not like this method is because it is clay and it just snaps. Actually, I was gonna show you guys one. 
um, and I snap it just by you know putting it in the uh, little container so very very fragile so until this is glued down you got to treat it with you know kitty gloves so um, not my favorite method although it's not horribly expensive it's probably the mid grade of the two this was 10 bucks for this whole pack so I mean you could get quite a bit out of this but again I don't think that I would recommend that um, all of these by the way are low odor and easy to paint actually all of them are very easy to paint the last one that I saved was probably our preferred method but I really really need to work on it because the third thing that we use was UV resin and this was actually recommended by a fellow um, crafter and artist, um, Itty Bitty. She showed it to us, um, I think during a live or something. And um, I went ahead and purchased it. You will need the resin. You will need a UV light and you can either use this one or I have my little flashlight one somewhere. I like this one because it's got a wider surface. It's meant for nails, but it's got a white wide surface so you could get you know i was able to shove the entire mold in there like a little bakery oven it was quite convenient um so you'll need those two items that's all you're going to need for these you will get the crispest cleanest impressions ever i mean they're pretty much flawless every single time and they are just perfect they are flat i mean you can see every vein on that butterfly and it's pretty much effortlessly as far as you know putting down the product um i will tell you they are i mean it's hard plastic so there is no flexibility in these they're not easily breakable i mean i would actually have to like really push down because it's not clay it's plastic now it's, it's just hard plastic but look at those aren't they beautiful all right so all those sound perfect right they're clear they're strong they're they're beautiful I mean flawless imprints basically or molds out of them now i will give you a warning these are toxic so when i say that some of them are even dangerous and hazardous that's that's what i mean by these um they tell you to use in a ventilated area or in a big room and all that um, not good enough guys <laughs> if you're going to be doing just one or two maybe okay maybe you can get away with it and it'll be okay if you're going to be doing more than a few pieces do me a favor do yourself a favor go outside go outside because i'll tell you i had the windows open i'm in a very large room i had a full room air purifier literally next to me sucking the fumes as as because when you actually light it you can actually see the little fumes rising sucking the fumes out i had a fan right in front of it blowing the fumes into the air purifier i mean it was crazy i had a whole setup because you know i don't play with my health and nothing nothing i mean i had a headache and i wanted to throw up um after about maybe 30 minutes of of doing some of these and so i will tell you my recommendation for your health for your family's health if you're gonna try this method if you're gonna try this method please put on a mask go outside and i guess yeah just deal with you know with the weather or bugs find a maybe a covered area or something and and do it that way because this is not something that i would recommend that anyone does indoors however however again um just beautiful crisp 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 images um is it the least expensive no this is probably the most expensive method out of all of them i think this was 20 or 30 dollars on amazon and they have different brands but this one's the one that's 200 grams but you get quite a bit and i wanted to show you that big one look at this this is what i was talking about look how gorgeous that is i mean they're just you know beautiful so hopefully this has given you guys some insights into what um how to use these molds what type of products you could use what um you might want to try if you do want to give these a go and which ones you will definitely avoid um some of course cautions um so because i want you guys to of course be healthy and take care of yourselves and then some ideas also on molding so hopefully i've given you quite a bit of information packed into a very short video if you do have any questions, um, if I've missed anything, please feel free to just comment below and we will be sure to go through those and respond in a timely fashion. But we hope that you have enjoyed the video and we hope that you will join us uh, soon. Uh, we'll be using these, of course, uh, throughout our projects so you'll get to see them painted and 
utilize as, as we move throughout the year. All right. Thanks so much for joining us and have a blessed day. Bye.